Time to talk to Robert Morningstar. Are you there, Robert? Yes, I am, Jeff. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for uh, running that last 10 miles to get home on time. You sound okay. you, you hardly sound winded. It's amazing. Well, I'm in pretty good shape. I have to admit, this is one of the best summers of my life. Really? Good physically. For you. Physically, right. yes. I, I got you. Good, great, good job. Now, Robert Morningstar, oh, it, it's been a couple of years since he's been on, is a very, very interesting man with a tremendous length and breadth of knowledge and wisdom that covers many areas. Uh, you're, I guess, kind of getting into something new now. Someone passed away. You want to tell us that story and, and what you may or may not be going sure. to be doing with that? Because it has to do with the UFO field, and we've yeah. always been a, a very interested in that. Yeah. Robert has had uh, some remarkable uh, stories to tell and events to portray mentally so we can all hear them, at least uh, try to imagine what they were like in past shows. Go ahead. Well, I'm sad to report the death of Dirk van der Ploeg, who is the publisher and the founder of UFO Digest. He passed away June 26th in Hamilton, Ontario. And it was a very shocking loss cause, because I'd spoken to him just a few days before and he sounded very well. And, um, uh, and that's all I can say. But uh, I've been asked by the family to continue publishing uh, UFO Digest, and we have continued. We have some very good articles there. Recently by uh, Nick Pope, we have an article about mm -hmm. Jim Mars' new book. And Chris Holly uh, recounts uh, UFO experiences uh, that happened in Long Island in the 1960s. When there, a, there, yeah, there was, yeah those, uh, those were... Uh... Remarkable stories. I remember years ago reading about some of them. Uh, Jim Mars' new book, by the way, is uh, sitting here as well. It's called Population Control, How right. Corporate Owners Are Killing Us. Yep. And uh, I would have switched it around. I would have called it How Corporate Owners Are Killing Us. And then the <laughs> subtitle, I would have made Population Control. But Jim and I go way back on the idea of titling books and the, the struggles therein, as you, <laughs> you well know. Huh. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because um, I'm a great supporter of Jim Mars. We share so much in the JFK assassination field. Yeah. Uh, and um, this book has brought to, um, to light uh, something that I've been referring to for the past many years, a concept for which we have not had the right words. But I coined two words for, for what is happening in this, uh, in this regard of depopulation. I call it slow genocide and population pruning. And that there is a program targeting certain groups of people. Yes, there is. For uh, diminution in, in the size of their numbers. Euro and, European Americans are certainly one of them. Well, this is one of the most disturbing things that I have ever seen. This, you know, I want to say that I did not celebrate July 4th this week uh, mm -hmm. or last week uh, as, mm -hmm. as we would ordinarily have because I really am starting to feel that this is not the country that I was raised in. No, my God, no. And, and, you, no. and I, have to, I have to say, you know that I was raised a uh, northerner. Yeah. And uh, that, that, that that's my, uh, my background culture. But I've always understood the Civil War. I've always sympathized with the plight of the South. Mm -hmm. I've always respected the heroism of, of their, um, their battles. Agreed, 100%. And to, see, yeah. to see this uh, uh, backlash, a black backlash, oh, at the... against the flag. This is, this is so redolent of communism. This is this is communism in our midst. And it was. I also think, Robert, uh, it was a a quasi contrived e effort to uh, stampede the sheep into supporting this idiocy, which they successfully did. Uh, yeah. My God, it's our heritage. It's history. It's part of our country's history. It's gotten kind of ghoulish in in the uh, desecration of the grave of uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest. Yeah. Uh, Again. I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they removed his statue, and then they moved his grave. Oh, God. This is really uh, terrible stuff. But, you know, it's all part and parcel of this overall um, global uh, control of populations and control of what, what people think. 
And the cover-up of the UFO phenomenon and the secret space program is at the core of this, this whole big lie that we have been living. And only now people are really starting to see through, through the, uh, the deception and the camouflage and the distractions. So um, I'm on the show to talk about UFOs, and uh, so I'd like to go in that direction. Sure. Let's again revisit UFO Digest and tell people that we are continuing. It's a uh, wonderful... Uh, What's the site URL, Robert? Uh, it's UFOdigest.com. Dot com, okay. And uh, we have an, an article there by Nick Pope who writes a column for UFO Digest. And this one's interesting in uh, his perspective on whistleblowing, uh, whistleblowers and leaks of uh, national security-related information. So I would uh, direct people to read Nick Pope's uh, article. And I'd like to review of what, uh, you know, July 20th, uh, this is one of the most uh, interesting synchronicities of this conversation is today's the day that Apollo 11 landed on the moon. Is it really? Oh, yes. That's, uh, yeah. That is interesting. Yeah, and I was watching, like, <laughs> I think one billion people watched that. Event. Well, we watched uh, Stanley Kubrick's uh, back studio footage, didn't we? Yeah, no, I don't believe that. I really believe they went, but that what was fed to us is, is uh, filtered and censored. But I want to tell everyone, you know, when you see this uh, videotape replayed mm -hmm. of, um, of um, Neil Armstrong uh, descending the ladder yeah. to the surface of the moon yeah. i want to assure everyone i was watching that night and one of the most mind-boggling things about that first transmission is that the camera was mounted upside down and we didn't see him go down the steps we saw him go from one corner up the other way really? and I, yeah and i had this feeling of Wow, I wonder if they're doing that intentionally to bend our minds into this, uh, you know, this concept of another world opposite ours. It was a brief, brief moment, but they've corrected the videotape, and now you see him go down. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, well, gravity was up that night. And, That's funny. Uh, I, didn't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't know anything about that. Mm, it's a lot of stuff. Let me tell you that there, if you revisit a lot of YouTubes, like CBS histories of uh, of events, like the JFK assassination, and they say full CBS report, you know, from November twenty second, nineteen sixty three. I can tell you, it's not full. They've edited out several key uh, key uh, sequences of uh, film that that was shot in Dealey Plaza, uh -huh. and an interview, a very interesting interview with a police officer on the grassy knoll. So the scene that I'm discussing about uh, deletion of films, of scenes, one is a group of men, crew-cut men in, in suits, running down the slopes from the grassy knoll immediately after the assassination and jumping into some cars, convertibles, that are top-down, and they all jump into it, into, into them and race away. And when that was reported at first uh, on CBS that day, they said suspicious men had been seen running from the grassy knoll. They hadn't been identified. Later on in the day, they identified them as uh, members of Army intelligence. So that assuaged everyone's suspicions. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now we know. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so the do. other one, which is more important, they interviewed a police officer. They ran right up there. CBS ran up there with a camera. And they interviewed a police officer who was holding a shotgun. And he was talking about he had seen suspicious men on the grass. You know, he'd asked somebody for identification. He said that he, the man pulled out Secret Service identification and presented it to him. But that he should have been more suspicious because he had d dirty, greasy fingernails, more like a mechanic would, you know. But he had the uh, ID, and so he let him go. They showed that. Uh, two times that afternoon, and forever, has, that interview with that cop has disappeared. And the reason is that cop was J.D. Tippett. How did he get up there? <laughs> I've been telling people for years, J.D. Tippett. Well, he, he, he left there and went to his death not that, many right, minutes later. Right. Exactly. It was a plan, and he had been set up. He was part another of... Patsy. Another wow. Patsy. Another um, Patsy. 
Yes, it was a triple sacrifice. Isn't it? You know, I was listening to the previous uh, program. Yeah. Regarding, uh, you know, the arcana. And uh, one of the things that I, uh, it's kind of a cipher or a code that I broke, you know, t- getting the lead from William, C- William Cooper, who revealed that Dealey Plaza was the fir- is an open-air temple to the foundations of Freemasonry in uh, Texas. The first mm-hmm. lodge was there mm-hmm. in this Dealey pasture. So when he gave that hint, I began to study more and more deeply in, into the the whole thing, the geometry, the numerology, so on and so forth, the astrology. And the astrology of that event is overwhelming. Mm. If there, was a con- there was a conjunction of Mars and Venus in the constellation Scorpio. Um, Mars is said to have been in the constellation Scorpio on the night that Osiris was killed. So President Kennedy's assassination was mimicking several historic events. Well, stuff. they don't mess around, do they? They plan yeah. these things out. They've got their rituals. They've got all of their little codes. and, and uh, But the death of President Kennedy was uh, a, a great, I mean, the last straw, the last straw that really put the operation to kill President Kennedy uh, in the go mode. Agreed. Uh, oh, was, sure. But yeah. it was the UFO issue. He had, on November 12th, he had communicated with the Director of Central Intelligence and uh, demanded, uh, ordered, that there be a completely a new review of UFOs referred to as unknowns. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to know which were the Army, Navy, and uh, Air Force unknowns as opposed to Russian unknowns, and he wanted to know what was left over because he was hot on the trail of what the UFOs were up to. And now, the UFO- well, certainly, excuse me, but one of a number of things that could have figured in his death could have gotten sure. him killed. One sure. Of yeah, go ahead, oh, please. Yeah, but I'm saying that the, that was the, the, the spark, the final the uh-huh. final last straw. Of course, the civil rights movement was was uh, picking up steam. The speech at American University on June 10th, 1963, mm-hmm. when he called for uh, the test ban. Right. Well, he called for the... Uh the inspections, if you remember. You still there, Robert? I know we had a little dip there. We're getting a interference because somebody else is trying to call me at the same time. Okay. But I'm, I'm not answering. So well, now, remember uh, Jack Kennedy also had a bit of a problem with David Ben-Gurion. Because oh, yeah. Kennedy, Kennedy knew damn well they were going to build a, a, uh, an atomic and then a hydrogen bomb because yeah. there was plutonium being stolen right and left from American nuclear facilities even then. Then Gurian said, no, you will not inspect Demona. Kennedy mm-hmm. said, yes, we will inspect Demona. So there's another easy reason for him to be killed. Well, uh, you know, that, that is true. And interestingly enough, in that period of time, one of the hotbeds of UFO activity was the Belgian Congo, as it was called then. And why there? The UFOs were... A- Bring around uranium mines in the Belgian Congo. Uh huh. So the UFO issue and radioactivity is intimately related. When we talk about Rendlesham Forest, we're talking about a nuclear arsenal. Mm-hmm. When we talk about the Minot, uh, Mino, if you're French, you say Mino. If you're American, you say Minot uh, Air Force Base incident. Mm-hmm. Back in the 1950s, the missiles were retargeted by a UFO that uh, stopped over each missile silo, shone down red light into into the area from above, Mm -hmm. and when the um, when the missileers, which is what they're called in the Air Force, the missileers, Mm -hmm. uh, realized that this was happening, they lost total control of the missiles. They went into a shutdown mode. They when Boeing uh, uh, technicians, specialists, came in to analyze what happened, they found that something had taken over the entire missile system mm-hmm. and changed the targets. One question I would love to know under freedom of information is, what did they change those targets to? If they were aimed at Russia and they came in and changed them, what did they want to hit? That's really interesting. 